The book Meatonomics explores the hidden economic forces that drive meat and dairy production and the way that those forces influence consumer behavior. One of the book's main points is that consumers have largely lost the ability to make informed, independent decisions about how much meat and dairy to eat, and that instead, those decisions are made for us by the big meat and dairy producers. They're able to control our decision-making process to that extent because they keep prices artificially low, they bombard us with misleading messaging, and they largely control the regulatory and legislative agendas in this country to the extent they're affected. Animal food producers in this country are externalizing the majority of their costs, which is to say they're imposing those costs on consumers and taxpayers. Let me give you an example of how that works. If I pay a garbage collection service to come to my house once a week and pick up my garbage, I've internalized the costs of garbage collection. On the other hand, if I take my garbage, put it in my trunk, and drive over to a park and dump it there at midnight, I've externalized my garbage collection costs and I've imposed those costs on society. This book is the first book to add up all the costs that meat and dairy production imposes on society and it finds that that number is huge. It's something like $414 billion, that's a billion with a B, each year. What that means is that if producers were required to internalize those costs and bear them themselves instead of imposing them on society, the prices of animal foods would skyrocket. A $4 Big Mac, for example, would cost about $11, and a $5 carton of organic eggs would cost something like $13. We've seen something interesting in this country in the last 75 years, and that is that as the retail prices of most consumer goods have risen, as you'd expect, the retail prices of animal foods have actually fallen on an inflation-adjusted basis. So if you go back to, say, 1935 and look at the prices of beef, pork, chicken, eggs, and dairy, and compare those prices to where they are today, on an inflation-adjusted basis, those retail prices have fallen across the board, in some cases in dramatic ways. For example, the price of eggs is about 78% lower today than it was in the mid-1930s. Now, there's a basic principle of economics known as the law of demand, and that says that as retail prices come down, consumption goes up. Just as the law of demand predicts, we've seen dramatic increase in consumption of animal foods over the last 75 years. Going back to the mid-1930s, Americans were consuming about 100 pounds per person of meat per year. Today, that number is more like 200 pounds per person, so we've basically doubled our consumption. The problem is, the clinical literature says, in hundreds of peer-reviewed published studies, consumption of animal foods, especially at the high levels in which we engage in this country, causes disease. Just as that literature predicts, we're seeing high rates of disease in this country today. One in three Americans is obese. Two in three Americans are overweight. One in three has heart disease. One in nine has diabetes. We have some of the highest incidences of these particular diseases on the planet. Because those diseases are caused by animal foods, and because our consumption of animal foods is caused by their artificially low prices, we can actually say that the economic force involved in driving those prices down is causing us to suffer from disease in this country.